episode two, Unidentified Flying Objects. It's your boy Icon back for some DC TV. So in our last episode, Naomi had come face to face from the man with wings and he let her know that, uh, asked the question and she was like, who am I? So now it, uh, well, he basically flat out spilled the beans. He told her dead ass. He was like, look, I'm from Thanagar. He said, I'm on this planet, never said why. He was like, I got wings, and my wings are made out of metal, like nth metal, you know, the strongest metal in the galaxy, whatever. And he was just like, oh, I can sense vibrations with my wings, and you have power as well, because I can sense it. So now she's just kind of like, he basically flat out told her, like, yeah, you're an alien. You're not from this planet, and you have secret abilities. And then she looked at him, the, the look she gave him was hilarious. And then she was just like, bro, she was like, I ain't no alien. And then he was just like, oh, but he was like, you deny your true self, but he was like, you have the power. And then she was just like, okay. Like, she told him, she was just like, listen, this is bullshit. She was like, how come you never said anything before? And he was just like, well, you don't just drop a bomb like that on somebody without reason. But because of everything that's been going on lately, and you like investigating the day that you were adopted, he was like, this seems kind of like the perfect time to actually say something. And she wanted proof. And he told her, he said, well, he's like, I can teach you about your abilities. But he was like, you know, you just have to come with me and I'll show you. So the next day, I guess like they go to a bridge and he tells her, he was like, you know, your training begins on, you know, to prove that you have power. Because he asked her, in your entire life, how many times have you broken something? How many times did you get a cut? Did it scratch? You know, have you bled? Did you break your foot? And then she was just like, never actually. And he was like, yeah, he was like, you've never, he was like, you've never broken any bones because you're indestructible. And then he told her, he was just like, listen, in order to prove this, I'm going to need you to jump off this bridge. And then she was just like, hell no. <laughs> so, you know, he was just like, oh, that's the only way to prove that you have, no, that you have the power. And then she goes, what? if you're wrong she was like I'm just, she, he was like well if you he said if I'm wrong then you'll jump off the bridge and you'll make a splash and you'll probably break your foot and then she's like that's completely horrible he was like yeah but at least it'll prove that you're not an alien and obviously you know like she backed down and she didn't want to jump off the bridge and then he was then then he jumped off the bridge and then he sprouted his wings and then he was just like you can't deny who you are Naomi and he was just like when you're ready for the true test he was like I'll be right here waiting for you so at this point she spends the rest of the episode now basically trying to prove that aliens and superheroes doesn't exist she ends up researching the crash that happened on the day that she was adopted she even asked her parents about it and her parents straight up lied to her face like her parents know every single thing that happens they know she's an alien and because it's like her dad's in the military for christ's sake so they basically found this alien child and they stuck her with these two people who were probably looking trying to get pregnant at the time because they were a married couple and the government basically said watch after this girl we'll monitor her to see if there's you know to see if there's a problem they know the deal you know like they they definitely know the deal but they lied to the girl they lied to the poor girl face and they're just like oh we're just your parents and we want what's best for you and i was like bullshit <laughs> so but she's not letting it go and here's where the recruiting started because her best friend came over and her best friend calls her babes like every 13 seconds and i find it weird and annoying but <laughs> her friend her best friend came over she told her friend everything she was like listen this dude said that i'm an alien and i have powers and her friend thought it was cool she was like oh and then he was like superman is real you know <laughs> like the, like her friend was actually all in but then she was just like but if that's the case she said but if you're an alien and if you have alien powers why are you trying to prove that aliens don't exist and why are you trying to prove that the crash landing on the day that you were adopted never happened because she said it seems like a pretty big coincidence and then she was just like oh just help me so she ended up helping her they needed a car so then the friend called this other dude who had like some beat up car he showed up so now we have three people then the guy that i guess she's been flirting with or talking to he came over to her house to help out with the whole situation. So now we got four people. Then the black dude that, you know, used to date her, the two of them were supposed to work on a school project. He ended up showing up and now we have five people. And then the five of them were driving down to the place where the crash site used to be, where the UFO crashed. The car broke down. They ended up calling the purple haired girl. And now we got six people. And I'm sitting here like, when the hell did this, like, when did this become Scooby in the game? <laughs> I was just like, there wasn't a need to recruit 
shoot all these people. But, you know, in, in a lot of these CW shows, like, there's always, like, a group. There's always a cast. There's always a team, you know. And I guess, like, this is going to be her team because they literally came up with a reason for all six of these people, <laughs> like, to be in the same place at the same time. And one of the guys even said, like, the kid who had the car, he said that there was a guy that was actually around when the original UFO had crash landed. So they went to go talk to him, and he was telling them the story about what happened. And then he said that him and his friends tried to investigate. And then, you know, all of a sudden they saw like this big glow and light. And then the next thing they know, they never had a chance to actually look at the aircraft or get on the aircraft because he said after they saw the light, they just ended up back where they originally were and they didn't even know how they got there. Naomi was just like, well, if that was the case, and she was like, if you never, if you don't know what happened, why are there no, you know, like residual pieces? Why are there, why is there no like, you know, like metal, no traces of anything, you know, at, at the, you know, at the, at the crash site. And then he was like, because where y'all looking, that's not where the crash site was. <laughs> like, that's not where the original crash site was. So he told them where the original crash site was. They go down to the crash site. While they're there, some of her powers start kicking in to the point where she can start like feeling like the tree. She can hear the tree. She can hear people. She can hear vibrations and everything. Like her powers are slowly starting to kick in. They end up going all the way down to this warehouse. And when they go down to the abandoned warehouse, Naomi sees on the wall the same symbols and the same writing that she saw on that little tablet thing that that black dude stole from her. And then at that moment, here came the black dude. And then, like the black dude ran up on him. So now Scooby and the gang, like they're all back to back to back to back to back to back. And the guy's just like talking in the shadows and he's just like, oh, I don't want to hurt your friends. He's like, he told her friends, he was just like, oh, all of you leave and just leave me and Naomi alone. And I was like, huh? I was like, that didn't even sound right, dude. Dude, there had to be a better way for him to say that. And then they were just like, oh, we're not leaving her. And then he was like, if they don't, they will all die. And then Naomi was just like, guys, it's okay. You can all leave. She's like, I'll be fine with some strange, random, grown-ass adult in this abandoned warehouse by myself. And then and then, her, and then the girl, and then like her best friend, she was just like, yeah, guys. She was like, we have to trust Naomi. We're going to leave. We're gonna... And then the black dude was like, yo, we're going to be right outside. But my whole thing is... If you were gonna tell all of them to leave, what the hell did you bring all sixes before? <laughs> like you brought six people, and they're just like, oh guys, you could just wait outside. You know, I was just like, really? <laughs> like that was crazy. And then you know, so she's talking to the black dude. The black dude was just like, look, it was just like, like stay out of it, child. He was just like, you don't, you cannot grasp the power. <laughs> you know that is that that is bestowed upon you. And then the two of them had a little face off. And then while they had a face off. Naomi ended up creating like the same vortex that she created before and it started surrounding her entire body. But this time it didn't appear out of fear. She purposely conjured it and she made it happen on her own. So now she's able to actually control this vortex. And I think at this moment she's accepted the fact that she is an alien and that she does have power. So then she ended up heeding the word of the black dude you know, like the, like Naomi left, like all of her friends left, and then you know, like at, like the next day, she went back to the she went back to the to the tattoo shop and spoke to the Thanagarian, and then you know she told him she was just like you're right, you know she was like I, I do have power, I am an alien, and then she's like how is it, you know how can this be, and why did you tell me the truth, and then you know he was just like well there's no reason not to lie to you, he's like everybody should get to know who they are, and then she was just like fine now that I believe you, she was like tell me more and like help me with my power, cause he for some reason he feel he sounds like he knows what her powers are. Like, like, cause he told her earlier, he was just like, oh, cause she was like, I have powers. And he was like, yeah, and they're pretty cool. And I'm like, how do you know what her powers are? But anyway, so she, he's going to help her, you know, with her power, discover her power. So, and then at the end, she finally, they, he we went back to the bridge and then he was just like, now jump child. And then she jumped off the bridge and then he looked down and he was like, ah, oh, not one scratch. You know, he was like, not a splash has been made in the ocean. Cause apparently that vortex that she creates, acted like a tornado and she's using it to like fly now because the girl can fly but they didn't show us that so that was um you know that that was that was pretty much it and then in the end her dad got run up on by his boss and then his boss was just like oh there are aliens among us and superman's an alien and aliens are and i'm just like do we not know that or this show is not on earth prime Let's just get that. Let's just get that out the way right now. If they just found out that Superman's an alien, the show is not on Earth Prime, you know. But he was just like, "Oh, if there are aliens here, we must hunt them down and kill them immediately," <laughs> which is now extremely awkward, you know, because his daughter's an alien. So we'll see how this un how this progresses because, like I said, the government's involved now, and they they live in a little small town called God knows what, and it's about it's about to unfold. But like I said, but the girl, but it looks like in episode three, her powers are actually going to come out now. So we finally get to like the show. The show's good so far but i'm still waiting for the wow factor like i'm waiting for the bomb to drop here and it looks like we're gonna get that in episode three where she's gonna
going to finally, you know, like manifest some power and actually do something with her power. Maybe she'll stop a bank robbery or save a plane from falling out of the sky. So that was it. And thank you for tuning in. So like I said, like, you know, so this, the show is cool so far. I mean, I could do without the teenage drama, but, um, you know, we're getting that on Superman and Lois. You know, that that's the M.O. of Stargirl. <laughs> so you got to take the positives with the not so positive. But like I said, but I'm definitely intrigued with the show. I want to know more about these aliens. I want to know what Earth that she's on. And I actually want to see her power manifest so she can become the hero that we've heard about and know because I want to see what she looks like for the first time live action. So I said, so hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on YouTube as always. Share your thoughts about Naomi. What do you think about the show so far now that we're two episodes in? Are you interested? Are you going to keep watching? Are you going to see where this goes? And they like said, share your thoughts and we'll talk about it. So that was it, guys. So episode two in the books. We're waiting for episode three. And until episode three, take care, mind your power. And until then, I'm out this.